Hey, all you swell folks of the internet. Uh, we've got an OU battle here from week three. It's a great one. Or I hope so, anyway. We've got the two 2-0 two guys in Blunder of the Classiest and ABR of the Ruiners. Um, both classiest are in the top three or so of the standings, I believe, while Ruiners are close to it. They're fifth or sixth. In the third week, it's not really important or as important, but, you know, you want to uh, win, because who doesn't like winning? So, uh, both of these guys have showed very, very good performances so far. And this game will surely be at least as half as heat as uh, those fajito uploads that Blunder does. Anyway, so ABR is running some generic-ish looking extra real Clefable Skarm defense stuff. He's got a uh, Keldeo, which is nice, because usually those teams don't love facing Bisharp, and it just puts more offensive pressure on from the get-go. Well, Blunder is using Magnezone, so Rip Skarmory. Uh, Landorus handles Excadrill. Uh, Latias versus Keldeo. This is the Mega for ABR, so we can just fire off uh, T-Wave. Blunder kind of struggles with this. Well, no, he's got Clefable, but yeah, I didn't see the Clefable at first, because the rest of his team was so offensive. I just... It didn't register to me that he was using such a bulky Pokemon. He switches in Magnezone to eat the T-Wave, and that's a very nice move, because... You can Volt Switch out without getting Clef paralyzed. And a Sander T-Wave Bolt Beam Latias gets... I mean, it beats Magnezone eventually, but it's more for the slow Volt Switch. So, uh, ABR trying to paralyze the Clef, which would help his own Clefable later, and help his uh, Skarm beat it, because... Well, Skarm is probably not living or uh, staying in for an extended period of time because of Magnezone, but... Uh, yeah, and just crucial full paras when T-Tar's hitting it and all that shit. If it lives in extra dull iron head because it's like Jolly Balloon and like max defense, then it can help him para flinch. Uh, Flash Cannon, perhaps expecting the extra dull to try to block Volt Switch or Tyranitar. And Magnezone is actually a really, real big problem even without the threat of trapping Skarmory. Because Flash Cannon hits everything except Keldeo. Okay, it only hits, it hits three pokes well. And another, uh, and it kind of thuds against the others. It hits Estradol pretty decently. Uh, so, forget the stupid arbitrary counting. Uh, it threatens the guys that resist Flash Cannon. So, uh, Blunder makes a great move going to Keldeo on Skarm. Skarm was trying to sneak a spike in and switch out. So that was a nice thought on ABR's end. Since, uh, if it comes into Specs Flash Cannon, then it can spike up the switch, excuse me, and uh, then switch out and still be alive. So, good thinking, but Blunder catches that and hits Scald. He burns with the second one and eats a Spec Sword. Uh, maybe the Clefable has Healing Wish, that would be cool. Uh, perhaps he was trying to catch Tyranitar. Well, wearing down Keldeo is nice, now it's certainly in pincer range, unboosted pincer range. And it uh, takes away a solid switch into Spec's Flash Cannon. So, uh, there's Clef. There's Clef. So, this is this could be Blunder's Rocks, dude. It could also because I th I like the idea of Rocks Clef and like Double Dance Lando T more. It makes the team more threatening overall. Uh, although Calm Mind Clef and Rocks Lando also works. It's just not as immediately threatening as and it doesn't quite fit the whole you know pincer offense theme. So Clefable switches, here comes Magnezone, expecting a T-Wave, also threatens out with Calm Mind, and Flash Cannon is like, free as fuck, because Extra Drill gets hit hard on the ABRs running the Assault Vest set, which he has used a couple times. Skarm, I mean, it's Skarm, man, so he can even Volt Switch. Oh, that Flash Cannon did nothing. Uh, so that is clearly a max Spadef Skarm. I honestly, I think Volt Switching might have been good there. Although, I guess if Clef could, wanted to use Soft Whale to scout, then it could have. So I suppose Flash Cannon was a little forced. So, uh, nothing really wrong there. And Spikes are not the end of the world. Or anywhere close to it, really. So, ABR will surely take this opportunity to get a Spike down, though. Since it will help out. And, uh... It's mainly going to be annoying with uh, the Magnezone. Blunder should definitely get up his own hazard as soon as possible uh, to retaliate. There's Keldeo, there's Spike. And now he can either kill... His uh, Scald was doing 
a decent amount to the opposing Keldeo. I think it... I'm not sure. Scarf with, like, uh, Scarf would make sense. It would give his team, you know, some good endgame speed and uh, just really be the nail in the coffin against offensive teams. So, Hydro, um, well, Skull, Threat of Skull, then it's like, if you can keep that Skarmory alive against the Magnezone team, definitely do it. So, he's going Clefable, he figured it's Scar, no, that's gotta be either a really spread Clefable or just a... I think the likelier option is just a Scarf Keldeo. So, uh, Magnezone can't switch into Clefable forever with the spikes down. And it, it is likely that Blunder has Defog on his Latios. In fact, I'd say it's expected with the Mega Pinsir he's running. But no rush to get rid of it. He'd prefer to kill the uh, fucking Skarm first. Plus, whenever Latios wants to Defog, then it will get pursued by Tar, so he has to time it right. There's Magnezone again. There's a double to Latias, so that's a nice move there. Latias can recover, scout the uh, move it's going to lock itself into, and then switch accordingly. So we're in this scenario again. Mega Latias, uh, regular Latias is really bad, but no, he's just flash cannoning away, and Skarma is forced to roost here, pretty much. Well, I don't know about force. It could get another spike off, but so Blunder's just pounding away with flash cannons. And Keldeo can't keep switching in. So he's got to... I think rocks go a long way in helping him bust through his core. Because he shouldn't have trouble breaking through it. He only will once the... Uh, without rocks. So that was a nice move on ABR's end. Uh, dancing around the zone and uh, putting down some spikes pressure. I mean, it'll be a while before zone, you know, is in danger of succumbing to it. But at the same time, you don't want to just act like you have all the time in the world. There's Lando to get rocks, good thought, and there's Roost. Uh, I do not think this is like uh, Smackdown Earthquake, which would be really good, but the rocks will stay because uh, if there is spin on that drill, then you know it's not coming into Landorus for a while, so it's going to stay. So, uh, rocks go down, spikes probably go down. No, he's switching to drill? I do not understand that play. That was very weird. Uh, well, I guess he gets a spin off now as U turn breaks it. Oh, he toxics it. Okay. That's cool, I guess. But now he gets scared out by like half of ABR's team. Well, Latios, if it has Surf, then it can. Uh, Keldeo, its, it's switch ins are numbered, and Clefable kind of comes in, as well as uh, Latios. But I don't think he lets this extra roll go. So I, if I'm Lunder, I double here. Most definitely. Question is to who, because uh, it depends on what his Clefable set is. I'm assuming Calm Mind, T-Wave 2, so that could cover Latias. And it could force in uh, Skarm to get the trap going without uh, making the rest of his guys uh, take residual. And Latias, you know, loses. It could probably engage in a Calm Mind battle with uh, the opposing Clefable. Um, well, actually, no, he would probably prefer to avoid that if possible, but like, uh, they would exchange T-Waves or something and that would help Blunder out a little. Hmm, this core is kind of tough to break, even with Zone. So, there's Exca, there's Latias, unless he's just going to spam Scald the Hofer. Ooh, that's rough. God, that's really lame. Uh, I know Scar Keldeo is weak and Mega Latias is really bulky, but that is extremely, you know, not cool. Uh, with rocks up, he can spam flash cannon a little better, but that's still really, really, you know, not cool. I, I'm not sure if I agree with Magnezone being switched in there. I think he should be saving the residual on it, because uh, he needs it for Clef, and he can just go to his own Clef. Uh, and he's getting chipped away at Ice Beam. He might ABR might even win this one on one. So I mean, he can healing wish to it. I, I mean, healing wish on Clef would be amazing for his team, but uh, I'm assuming that. It's uh, Rock's T-Tar, so that means Pinsir, once Skarm Ray is out of the way, and even with, can be a real pain in the dickhole. Uh, so he's going Skarm now at full. Rocks are going to annoy it a little, but it's still not going to be quite enough. So, maybe you're just wearing it down. 
and uh, he doesn't really have a great switch into it. I mean, what do you expect? When there's a Magnezone team, the rest of the team does not exactly specialize in switching in and killing Skarmory. So, Kelio can't switch, can only switch in one more time before it's forced to be Healing Wish or something. Nope, there's Clefable. Clefable switching into Scar means something's up. He's gonna either Flamethrower, which ABR's best response to that would be uh, his own Clefable if, he did, if he's trying to keep his Scar alive. There's Iron Head. Ah, oh, that's... Uh, unlucky Flinch would really, really suck here. I was thinking he might just go to Magnezone there on the clear Iron Head, but I and because it also would have because his uh, moves were either Iron Head or switch with uh, switch Nickel Fable. Although if he switches into Fable, then he's taking even more spikes, and that's not fun. Mm -hmm. So excuse me while I respond to this text, whatever the fuck it is. There's Whirlwind. If he gets Whirlwinded into Magnezone, that's really good. Nope, Keldeo. That's it's kind of rough. So. Um, that Icy Wind Miss is super lame. I mean, it's fucking Air Slash accuracy. Is he gonna do it again? No, he scalds no burn. He's fishing, he's not- he's getting it on the second try. Now he can preserve the Keldeo for, uh, Death Fodder. He's, I don't know why he's not going Clefable on the Latias. He can't go Magnezone here, I mean, I, I assume that's clear. But... Yeah, uh... Clef is the- yep, there's Clef, finally. I guess he was just trying to provoke the Latias into staying in earlier, and uh, to see if he could make something happen. Although, I'm not sure if that was the optimal way to go about it, but it, it works. So now Latias is burned. I mean, it's at full, it's hit, it used quite a bit of recovers, I think it's at like 10 now. Excadrill does switch in pretty safely. On Calm Mind, I'm not sure. If he has Flamethrower, he might have wanted to use it there. Although, with the Magnezone, the likelihood of fire moves goes down. That's just, like, been a rule ever since ADV. So, here's Lando. We put the rocks back up. Nope, not even uh, putting the rocks back up. It is slower, so Extra Girl can spin and it'll die. Uh, can spin first. But, I just don't see Extra Girl being wasted here. He can't switch into Skarmory, because that's going to get U-turned on, as Latias gets U-turned on, and... It's in trouble now, because Clefable is going to come in, it can't recover on Moonblast while burned, and it's going to come in later, although Latias is a lot less useful without Keldeo in the picture, and Keldeo is dying to spikes. So unless that Clefable really does have Healing Wish, then still. And even then, uh, avr has got a Keldeo of his own, well, no, Keldeo was burned and took damage, I forgot about that. But Scarf Clefable can kind of hold it off, plus uh, Spadef Scarm with its hits, so. Uh, Latias also going down is helpful for Blunder's Pinsir. Because Latias is faster, hits it with super effective Ice Beam, and uh, Quick Attack does not do all that much. So that's, uh, he's putting the pressure on, and he's holding his pincer all the way back. I'm assuming it's just Choppel Tar. Because uh, Scarf Tar, I guess he's got Spadef Skarm, but that's just, just still, Spadef uh, Skarm itself is not a great check to, you know, like Lottie, uh, not Lottie, well Lottie, yeah, but, uh, fucking, what's it called? Alkazams and uh, Gengars. Well, Gengar he can pursue. It's mainly Alakazam and other faster dudes like Torn. Uh, so, uh, he goes to his Latios, which is cool. I guess he can uh, threaten the Draco. Mega Latios does run max speed quite a lot, but Ice Beam isn't. The worst he's going to do is T-Wave. But uh, I suppose that's better than having Clefable T-Wave. He d and he doesn't really have that much use for Latios. I mean, there's Keldeo, but 40% burn. Oh, he just goes right to Titar. Well, now he's going to get the defog off. Andre, dude, Blunder is has not been very lucky so far. Um, yeah, he is. Uh, if you saw the Tsung game, then. That would have been really lame because he could have chunked the hell out of T-Tar and then defogged away the spike. And now he might not get to defog. And uh, Draco doesn't do that much. And it crunches, no defog. That's kind of lame. Draco misses are the worst. Like, who misses? Like, Fire Blast misses, okay. You could sort of understand even if they're lame. But Draco, that's 90. Who misses Draco? I mean, a lot of people, but like, it happens so much less than the others. Here comes Pinsir, as it is not a Scarf Tar. And he's just going to fire off a close combat. Uh, I might be a little premature, I would think, but maybe just doesn't want it being Shuker or something stupid and getting rocks up on the Lando. 
because uh, he really cannot have rocks up now. And uh, the closed combat switch ins. Latias dies, Clefable's at 74, so it dies to return afterwards. Yeah, Skarmory does not want to take it, and plus there's Silver Blooming threat of Magnezone. So, uh, even if his tar is Choppel, which it probably is, uh, I suppose that it could be Smooth Rock if he thinks he has uh, enough coverage on the Zam shit. Here comes Skarm, here comes Close Combat, and that fucking stings. And now we have a dilemma for both guys, because he really does not want Magnezone getting whirlwinded out, because it's weak enough already, but he really needs this Skarm dead. I think if I'm ABR, then I don't see a move that's like, next time Pinsir comes in, although Pinsir isn't exactly coming in on the whole, you know, uh, team, then something else will die. Although he has had to brace himself for the possibility of sacking shit to Pinsir you know, throughout the game. It's a wonder Skarm has survived this long. So, I mean, he could whirlwind here. He could, um, in fact, Whirlwind is probably the better one. Because, uh, he lives another close combat. Oh, that's a nice move on Blunders and making use of the... Oh, I see. Uh, making use of the dead Keldeo to make sure he couldn't get his Magnezone whirlwinded out, but... ABR switches. I don't know, close combat there just seemed really good. Uh... Just like, because uh, Clefable will die to return, and like maybe he was afraid of Iron Head or something or getting whirlwinded out, but I just didn't see a downside to uh, close combating once more. But it, it doesn't really matter that much, I suppose. Well, Scarm's still alive, but it can't switch in anymore. So here's Magnezone once more, firing off those flash cannons, and now something's gonna die. Uh, but then something will take advantage of the zone, although at least it can't be pursued. Man, a, a default would have been really nice. You know, those spikes are annoying. At least Pinsir won't be hit by him anymore. Uh, since it has Mega Evolved. So... Flash Cannon here, ABR is sacking either Latias or Keldeo. Probably Latias, since Keldeo can actually threaten, since there are no uh, water resists left. So, he probably goes Latias, lets it die, and then Keldeo comes in. So... And that miss, like, it's not a game changer. Well, yeah, it is a game changer in a way. It's not like a, wow, I got robbed by that miss. But it's a really, it's one of those moves that just, like, it makes it really hard to win. And uh, you can't claim that you got hacked by it, but that you would have won without it. But it's just super uncool. So here comes Scald, which will, you know, threaten everything. Or Hydro if he's feeling Randy. Because uh, Spadefco Fable can switch into Scald. Like, by the skin of its teeth, but it can. So, Hydro is pretty much guaranteed death. So, unless Blunder wants to go to Miss Camp, then... On the other hand, he doesn't really need Clefable for anything. Okay, so I think Blunder sacks Clefable here. And, uh... If he... Then he goes to Pinsir. So I suppose, uh... Fable is high enough to T-wave it, but, uh, yeah, that is a problem. Blunder is kind of having to stave off the clef with his own clef, so it makes it gayer, but, yeah, that, and that's another reason why close combating was a lot better. Uh, and, anyway, so what happens is, uh, he, if he tries to revenge it with Excadrill, then he has to send in T-Tar first. And uh, he has the Landorus to switch into that, and you turn and uh, have fun there. It's just that Clefable with Magnezone so low, switching into Latias early on, I'm just not on board with it. So, uh, and Clefable, because if you lure in Skarm, well, you want to lure in Skarm, you have Zone, and if Zo uh, Exca comes in, then you know you get your rocks with uh, Lando. Blunder's got 20 seconds on the clock. Did he ping? That would be horrific. If he did. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, jeez. Uh, his smog horse goes wild. If Blunder sent in his team, then it shouldn't matter. Unless ABR is going to lobby that he had a guaranteed win. 
And I mean, everyone thinks they have guaranteed wins these days. Uh, like, if I did X on turn 1, then I won the entire fucking game. And I really dislike that, but, uh... Yeah, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. So, um, they recreated, everything looks accurate to me, and Keldeo used Scald on the Clefable switch in. So, uh, god, I have to, it's been like an hour and a half, so I'm trying to remember where everything was. Hydro was the kill, Scald does not, so ABR does not pick up his free KO um, at the drive through and Blunder will soft boiled here since he can switch into Excadrill and he might want to Moonblast just to wear away at the Excadrill now he, he can switch into Keldeo Scald once more, I mean when it unloads Hydro then it'll die but um, yeah I think uh, Hydro was the better move there unless he explicitly didn't want to kill the Clefable and I can't imagine why he wouldn't. Maybe he didn't want the double down or something, but I'm not sure. Uh, what would he really do against the Fable by not killing it? I guess he gets a free Iron Head with Exca, but I mean, surely he would prefer the Clefable dead. I don't see him setting up with anything that would make it harder. That that would uh, you know be better if he kept it alive. Maybe he just didn't want to miss. Figured Skull would do enough, but Blunder's Fable is packing special defensivality. And here's Soft Boiled as here's uh, Excadrill. That's what I'm assuming anyway. I mean, keep the scar, man. Although everything dies to uh, Pinsir. More or less. Uh, no, there's Scar. As Blunder Call Mines on the Switch. I did not expect that since it's pretty much free entry for Excadrill should he go to that. Now, I assume he... well, he can't let Clefable die, because if Keldeo was going to die, then it was taking... it was pretty much out of commission, so it was okay, but if Clefable goes down, next time Keld comes in on Zone or Lando, then it's death, so I would keep it for sure. Now, ABR uh, getting possibly... well, Flamethrower is so unlikely here that uh, him whirlwinding out into Magnezone would be kind of lame. Nope, he's roosting, and there's Thunderbolt. I see, that's that's good. So that almost, I guess it almost assures an Iron Head. He could still whirlwind and take one, but then he's, if he whirlwinds and takes a fucking uh, Thunderbolt, then he's in pincer range. The threat is really Clefable at this point, so guessing games. Iron Head on Magnezone, and if he lets Magnezone go, then uh, the 31 with Spike, so he's got to be really careful. If he lets that go, then uh, Clefable could be tricky. Here's extra on T-Bolt. Double two! Ah, oh, that's, that's kind of not good. I, I can see why he did it, but I mean, it, it's, it's kind of rough now. The defog, the potential defog was really, really, really lame. Uh, not being able to get that off. And he could have just set up rocks again on this thing. Whereas Scarm is not exactly looking for more opportunities to spike at this stage in the game. And I just think Magnazone should have, uh, shouldn't have been switched into Megalodia so much early. So there's Lando, we're gonna see an Iron Header or Spin. We see an Earthquake? That was kind of odd. I mean, he's not letting Magnazone go. That was just waste from ABR, in my opinion. So we see another U-turn, nice, but he can't go to Magnazone because... Well, that U-turn is good because now Pinsir... I don't think it'll kill from 76%, but... I guess... Oh, he's going to Pinsir. Not afraid... Also, Thunderbolt on Clefable is nice for uh, potential Talonflame issues on Blunder's team, so that's a great call there. So... Uh, Pincer Swords Dances, and Return doesn't kill. Are we going to see a T-Wave? We see another Thunderbolt! Two T-Bolt Pincers in one game. Well, cl um, that's kind of an issue. I think ABR is looking good at this point because of the spike. Because uh, Skarmory is in range, and he can Iron Head, although I doubt Iron Head kills is the thing. Maybe he should have... Well, no, he can't Swords Dance because then uh, he's going to get two kills with uh, Clefable or whatever he sacked. And then Titar, but then Excra, Excra shuts it down. 
Now you probably wouldn't sack Excadrill uh, if um, or wouldn't sack Clefable on SD. He would uh, leave it to be a prick with something else. So there's another return. Down goes Clef. So Skarm comes in here for almost certain, you know, Whirlwind versus Iron Head fun. I personally think he's going to Swords Dance, but it doesn't really matter. Unless he's going to try to crit him, then, and even that, I'm not sure if it kills. Uh, it, it's probably a roll with a pretty decent favor, uh, in favor of Blunder pretty nicely. So, what happens, I think, is he whirlwinds no matter what, because... Well, if he iron heads on close combat, then it KOs. So... Uh, but the thing is, even if he whirlwinds on close combat, if he doesn't cha bring in a Magnazone, then he heals on Lando, and he heals on Clef. Although, I mean, if he heals, then that might finally be the turn where... You know, I, I think that's close combat, then. Because... Uh, hmm. Uh, I lost my train of thought, but... Because if he doesn't heal as Lando or Clef get chased in, then uh, he's weakened from the close combat. Uh, and therefore Pinsir will finish him off next time it's in unless it gets chased out by Excra so uh, whirlwinding on close combat is definitely bad very bad so ABR is thinking is it better that I just go to Tar and uh, chase him out with Excadrill or Nope, he's going to Skarm. Uh, crit will kill. Okay, that's... Uh, I forgot how much it was at. Crit will definitely KO from that point. SD on Iron Head means that we get the two kills of Skarm or Keldeo. Plus, uh... Probably not Keldeo, probably just Skarm. Skarm? Or he can, you know, just go right to Titar, actually, if he SDs. So there's, that's only one kill. And it might... Iron Head plus Sand might even KO. So, I mean, Pinsir has a lot of defense, but uh, it's a lot to take, a lot to consider here. Hmm. So, Skarmory is Skarmory is one hundred percent, absolutely. It, it it is. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of. They're thinking super hard here. I think Blunder should. Probably close combat. I, actually, there's no downside to iron heading. None at all. Absolutely zero. And he can't switch in Magnazone. Uh, Landorus means it heals up to full. So Magnazone gets whirlwinded out and then dies next time. So, I mean, it'll uh, be in pincer range, but pincer's also taking a lot. So he's iron heading here 100%, or he should. So, it depends on how much Iron Head does versus Mega Pinsir. If he can take one plus Sand, then, I mean, he's, then, oh, he's, he close combated. He roosted. I guess that makes sense. You know, that was the best move, because either on SD he gets back up to Sturdy, and I mean out of close combat range anyway, and um, now he's at Iron Head range. And on a switch, he's uh, at sturdy for all that shit, and he dominates the other two switches. So that was a good move. I did not take that one into consideration. Now it's harder to SD, knowing that Ironhead will probably kill. So there's another close combat. He's just wailing away at it. Uh, maybe his plan is to uh, let Skarm go down. Uh... Let Scar, or he's going to try to kill Scar with Zone, and then try to defeat Excadrill plus Keldeo with the combination of Calm Mind Clef Fable, which could be at full health if he saw Foily. Calm Minding was utterly, well, I guess not utterly useless there, but he spiked. Okay, 
Uh, well, good move there, although, I mean, that was the last thing I was considering. I mean, Zone was already dead, or er, Zone's still not dead, and it still died to two more, so that doesn't really change anything. Uh, maybe he doesn't have Iron Head, maybe he's Taunt. Okay, now he keeps the full health Skarmory. Let's Tard go. Uh, it, it was Chopel, who knew? And here comes Excadrill. So, plus two quick attack is going to do a fuckload, but uh, it's not going to quite be enough. And then it's somehow up to Landorus, which threatens Earthquake. And you turn, you know, maybe this isn't so bad for Blunder after all. If he lets Pinsir go, if X if Landorus comes in on Pinsir, Magnus and Clefable are still alive. Keldeo can't switch in, so either Extra Girl goes down, which helps Clefable a lot. Oh, actually, no, he had Iron Head in the other game. It's just that they recreated, so I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see the PP. I think I. He did Iron Head it. He Iron Headed it. Uh, yeah, he did. Oh, that just didn't show up. I'm almost positive. I must be losing my mind. Anyway, so Landers comes in. Excadrill dies or Scarm. Every Scarm coming in is a risk of Magnazone killing it, and then he can't switch into Lando. And then uh, if is he going to switch right into Iron Head? I mean, he's poisoned. I mean, he's bulky as fuck. But okay, so I guess he's saving Pincer. I guess he's decided that. Well, yeah, that that makes sense because. Quick attack damage is not going to change the fact that Landorus Earthquake KO- uh, I tried to say KO and kill at the same time. Kills it. And the Iron Head damage he's going to take here does not uh, make a difference in that. So I think we see Earthquake because uh, Extral is his one-stop shop for killing Clefable. So surely he doesn't leave it in. and. That's the dilemma. Without Keldeo, then he doesn't really have the power to, you know, just dump on Lando. And Magnazone is threatening the Skarm. See, imagine how good a position Blunder would be, and if he had been throwing Fable into the... I know he didn't want it paired, but is that really mattering at this point? Uh, I mean, he if he if it comes down to it, he, Skarm has better odds of para flinching it and shit, but he should be magging that anyway. And Excadrill should not... He shouldn't be taking the hit from Excadrill regardless. So... Uh, Mag healthy at this point would be really good. So he lets Keldeo go. I suppose Keldeo is less useful. So he goes to Clefable here, I assume, for. Uh, or Pinsir. Pinsir works to. Pinsir might die to uh, Spikeful Sand. But Clefable gets another round of leftovers, which I suppose isn't as important with Keldeo out of the picture now. But it is nice for Skarm Iron Heading it, which it will. Or it very well could. Uh, since Clefable is not needed now, so he should definitely go to it and uh, bring in Skarm, and then just force... Yeah, Clefable, I think, wins the game here. I'm not sure why Pinsir... Oh, Pinsir doesn't get hit by Spikes when Megas. Okay, that that makes sense, but I don't know why he didn't go to Clefable, because as I see it, that sort of won the game. He doesn't need Clefable for either of those guys. He only needed it for, uh, le for surviving against Keldeo for a couple turns. And if Skarm comes in on it, then it Thunderbolts, and j it just spams Thunderbolt. And although, actually, no, that there's the possibility of him getting a third spike to kill Magnazone. So, uh, in fact, it might die as is. That could be an issue. Well, if it does die at 19%, then Blunder should sack it here, then go back to Lando. And then I guess he tries to win with last poke uh, Clefable or something. No, he goes right to Lando, not fearing the... Things I, he needs. I mean, he's taken damage, but and Excadrill is not, you know, getting worn down either, because uh, it takes three percent from rocks. So I guess we are to assume that Magnazone does die, or he's just, you know, uh, being a beast. He's only got one more turn of sand, so he can U-turn safely here. U-turn one hundred percent because uh, if he Iron Heads again and you get the U-turn off, then Pincer comes in. Uh, and there's no more sand, so it's not going to warn away at. You turn, and now Pincer's in, and Scarm has to take two close combats with rocks up. Not a nice prospect. Since sand runs out here, it wasn't smooth rock, it was Chapel from taking the close combat. And uh, this is this is dangerous. So, does he throw out the CC? Because if Excadrill goes down, then 
Uh, Clefable, I mean, is more of a threat. He's just going to have to spam. Yep, okay, Clefable's more of a threat now. So, here come war games. Uh, what I would consider doing is going to Lando here, just to intimidate it. In fact, I don't think he can win. If he uh, goes to Lando first and intimidate, he's going to need like a fuckload of crits. Ah, that was unnecessary in my opinion. Okay, Magnuson definitely dies now. But he uh, close combats it for a trillion damage. And uh, intimidate means he can even intimidate twice. So Ironhead is doing Pit and Stickle Fable, who then sets up and wins. So, man, I really need a haircut, goddamn. Uh, anyway, so, close combat, just barely survives, and he whirlwinds, and Magnazone dies. I guess he was hoping for Lando to come in there, but, uh, yeah, that, that's game then. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, good work to Blunder for winning. He is now 3-0, dealing ABR, the Red Hot ABR's first loss. He is on fire right now. So, uh, Smog Tours explodes and Shake becomes insufferable as always. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'll catch you all next time. Good work to both players.